guys welcome back to my channel if you're new hi my name is Ava I'm so glad you can make it to today's video so today I'm going to be responding to some objections about Christianity and kind of bringing some light to these topics because I definitely believe it is so important to address these things and not just sweep them under the rug because as Christians we're called to defend our faith and give an answer for the hope that's in us so that's what we're doing today okay number one Christianity is a crutch heck yeah it is <laughs> I don't think people when they make this objection I don't think that they realize that everybody has a crutch everybody relies on something to keep them stable because or lack of stability <laughs> depending on what you rely on everybody knows that there's something that's gone wrong in our world we know that there's evil we know that something has gone wrong within us so we all have a crutch we all have something we rely on people that don't follow jesus rely on money sex drugs alcohol power you name it that is what they rely on we rely on jesus because he's the one that's actually able to fulfill us he gives us peace he brings truth he's strong when we aren't and he does fulfill us because we're not self-sufficient and he is. So I would say to that, yeah, but we all have a crutch and ours is just one that will last and others will lead down a path that is harmful. Number two, it's narrow-minded to think that Jesus is the only way to God or everlasting life. And to this, I would say that Jesus actually claimed that he was the only way in John 14, 6. If you are a Christian, if you claim to be a Christian, but you don't believe what Jesus said, then don't call yourself a Christian. And that might be harsh, but I know a lot of Christians that don't believe that teaching. They're called progressive Christians. And they believe that basically all roads can lead to God, all roads can lead to paradise. But the problem with that is I disagree with fundamental things that Buddhists believe or Hindus believe or Islam believes or atheists believe and so if we're believing opposite things it can't both lead to the same destination one of us has to be wrong if we're saying opposite things and one of us has to be right if you believe that Christianity is true which I've addressed in other videos on my channel reasons I believe Christianity is true then you have to believe what Jesus said about Christianity Christian means little Christ so if we're supposed to imitate Jesus, then we're supposed to follow him to the best of our ability. And a way that we can do that is take him at his word. And again, in John 14, 6, he says that he's the only way to God. And so if you are struggling with whether that's true or not, I would just say take it up with the Lord because it might seem narrow-minded, but we're all narrow-minded in some way. Everybody has some limit that they won't cross that's going to be narrow-minded to somebody else. But that just means that there is truth. That gives more evidence for why there, there is objective truth. Number three is what about the people who have never heard? Nobody will remain lost that wanted to be found. The Bible says that God knows our hearts. And so if somebody truly, if they had heard and they really did, if they would have chosen to follow the Lord, then... God won't forsake them. God will not just drop them like a hot potato. Nobody has ever or will ever remain lost when they truly want it to be found. I will say, if you have heard, but you've chosen, if you have knowingly, you know, chosen to not go down that path and go somewhere else um, in your life and choose a different trajectory of your life, then God won't save you because we have free will. That's something that's a beautiful gift that he's given us, but it leaves it up to us. The decision is ours. And so if we want to follow him, that is an open door because Jesus came so that we could have that way back to God. But if you choose a different path, then you can't, then that's your free will. That is your, you know, will to choose. But God's not going to force anybody into heaven that doesn't want to go there. At the same time, he won't leave or forsake anyone that wanted to be found. Number four, being a good person is all that matters. And if you're a good person, then you don't need religion or Christianity to save you. I think this is a big problem that a lot of people believe is that when we're good people, therefore we don't need a God or we don't need anything to save us. But the thing is, sincerity about being a good person doesn't dictate truth and doesn't help you get to heaven. Being a good person is also something that we're never gonna be able to accomplish because of our sin. And the Bible says that our best, our very best is filthy rags to God. That's not to discourage you from doing good things. That's just to say that we will never be as clean as God is on this side of heaven. And that's why we follow Jesus because he has a path back to God that will make us clean and whole. But 
on this side of heaven if our purpose if our goal is just to be a good person then we're never going to reach that and that's something that will leave you disappointed angry and unfulfilled is because we're never ever ever going to accomplish being a good person we all do bad things people have gotten it twisted people say that we're all good people that do bad things but i would actually say that we're all bad people and we have the capability to do good things but our heart is what matters so if our heart is given over to the lord then we are saved and in him we are made new we're clean i would hope most people try to be a good person per se but if we die on a bad day where we were a really bad person that day then all the work we just did beforehand is useless how unfair would that be i would say that we're never going to be able to accomplish that it's a it's a limited thing you know you can do good things but that doesn't mean that you're a good person we're all we're all capable of doing good things but next to god it's filthy rags and so if we want to be right standing with the Lord and get to heaven, then that's not how we're going to do it. We're going to do it by confessing with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. That's what Romans 10, 9 says. Being a good person doesn't pave your way to heaven. Following Jesus does. Number five, the Bible isn't true because it has errors. Since the Bible is God's word and God is not capable of lying, then it is completely trustworthy and without error. And I think people get error and difficulties mixed up just because there's difficulties and things that you can't comprehend or understand when you read it in the Bible, it doesn't mean that it's an error. There's no error in the Bible that will override the truth that's in it. Okay, sorry, I had to switch cameras real quick because my other one died, but the next one, number six, is if God is good, then why is there evil? We know that there's evil in the world, right? That's why we have this objection, because there's evil. So if we have a concept of evil, then we have to have some concept of what good is. All good comes from God. Therefore, if we know what evil is, we know what good is. And good comes from God. Meaning, there has to be a God to dictate what's good and what's evil. I think where we get mixed up is we get caught up in all the bad things that are happening to people. You know, we blame God for the evil and sin of this world when yes, he created us, but we are given the free will from there to carry out whatever we're going to do. And that's one of the reasons that God's forgiveness is so powerful and amazing to me is that his forgiveness can override so much sin. Another thing I wanted to mention is that if we had no evil in the world and if everything was fine and great, then we wouldn't need the Lord. And that's such a beautiful part of our salvation is we do need the Lord. That's why we're so desperate for something to save us from the evil grip that is in our world. So that's one of the most beautiful things about following Jesus is he frees us from the bondage of that because he's able to last one number seven if there's a hell why would a loving god send people there the first thing i would say is god doesn't send people to hell we do by our own volition and by our own free will we send ourselves to hell by choosing to be disobedient to the lord so he's given us the option and the free will we have the option to follow him or to not the second thing i would say is god hates evil and one day he will completely destroy it in the meantime he strives for as much people to come to the saving knowledge of christ i hope that you guys like this video thank you guys so so much for watching and my claim well <laughs> my clay Aaron shop is in the description if you want to check it out it supports me so much let me know if you have any more answers to objections that you have heard about christianity let me know if you want a part two to this because there are many objections i had a hard time narrowing it down to seven but yes thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye